Hello, so this is the um, recrystallization part of the second lab. Um, Dr. Parker went and did the, the entire recrystallization that you would do if you were in lab with us, but we feel like there's a little bit more we can add to this. So there's a few more videos in the playlist right after this. One is on recrystallization and one is on using a melting point apparatus, which that kind of fills in with uh, next week's lab. So watch those after you watch this and you'll kind of be kind of where you would need to be if you were doing this lab in person. All right, so the next step um, to our experiment is to recrystallize our lead in. Okay, so anytime you do a separation, you probably notice that in the separatory funnel, that separation wasn't perfect. Um, you might see that as a result of some kind of discoloration. Um, ideally, you'd like to see crystals, and you see this is just like a powder. Um, so we're going to recrystallize it using a solvent, in this case water, um, where the uh, solid is going to be soluble at high temperatures and it will be insoluble at cooler temperatures. So water has been chosen for, um, for this recrystallization and so the first thing you need to do is boil some of your solvent and get that piping hot. And I'm just going to add a few pipettes of my solvent to my solid. In this case this is our unknown. And then I want to keep that solvent hot, so I'm just going to transfer it and put that right on the hot plate as well. And then I can just keep adding some solvent to my solid. So I could let that go for a little bit and get that heated up to see if this will dissolve. And a common mistake of students when they're first learning recrystallization is to add solvent enough to to just dissolve that solid. But what happens is when we take this off the hot plate, we let that cool, our crystals uh, will crash out of solution, but there's they soak up all of the solvent. So there's not much solvent left over to filter from. So we wanna make sure and not only dissolve our compound, but also maybe add a little bit of extra solvent to that solid or to that solution at this point, so that when our solid crashes out as those nice crystals, we also have more solvent to filter from. So you can see we've got some discoloration in there. It actually looks like there's more than just our unknown got the solid on the side here. I want to dissolve. I'm just using this transfer pipette to move solvent over a little bit at a time. So here I've taken the solution off of the hot plate and it's starting to cool. So you can notice that little crystals starting to crash out of solution. And the slower this goes, the better. You start to form more pure crystals. If this crashed out really fast, then you can imagine impurities would get stuck in those crystal structures. So the slower the better. And you notice you can make the relationship that the solubility of that solid starts to decrease as the temperature decreases. So we'll let this cool to room temperature and So here I've just set up a little ice bath, I've got some ice cubes and some water, and now that my solution with the crystals has cooled to about room temperature, it's now ready to be cooled even further so that we can even 
and increase the amount of crystals that crash out of solution. Remember, as we decrease the temperature, we're also decreasing the solubility of that solid. So we'll just let this ice for a minute or two, and then we'll do a vacuum filtration.